Hey, how y'all doing? Once again, it's Against the Grain Sports. I'm your host, Jody Coleman. I'm joined with Gerard McCain and Jason Coleman, and we're back. We're talking about the Final Four, college basketball, the state of where it is. And right now we have Gonzaga versus UCLA. We got Baylor versus Houston. Uh, this is not a non. This is a non-traditional Final Four, except for UCLA. But U- UCLA coming in at a double-digit seed, at the 11 seed. We're not used to seeing the Final Four quite like this. And this is the the changing of basketball as we know it. Uh, I'm gonna go with Gerard first, man. What do you feel, and who you think is going to win this Final Four, or do you even care? First of all, before I even get to that, um, you just said a, a, a really a really big thing as far as the changing of college basketball. College basketball is going to change a whole lot more because HBCUs are in the picture now. Okay. They've always been in the picture, but nobody's giving them the respect and the credit and the attention that they're getting right now. So with that being said, a lot of the top talented kids will start going to these HBCUs and look for the NCAA to start trying to add HBCUs to the college tournament because without those top stars and those top kids, the NCAA is going to be in very big trouble. Well, you do know they you do know that they do have them in there. North Carolina Central have made the tournament before. Howard has made the tournament before. Uh, Southern have made the tournament before. So they have had HBCUs in the tournament. I'm talking about at, at a magnitude that's going to be way bigger than what it is right now. But that's just for the near future. Um <clears throat> Talking about the Final Four, I mean, do I really care? Not really. I mean, I've, I've struggled to watch college basketball throughout this whole tournament, even before the tournament. So, you know, I've had to turn off some games, especially some Gonzaga games and some Oregon games and some Houston games because it's just not – it's just not really that entertaining to me. So, no, I really don't care who wins. I care who wins because, you know, the, the – these college players didn't get this platform last year because of COVID-19. Right. So I do care on, on, on the level of them getting this exposure and seeing who the real top pick should be. But as far as me caring passionately, no, I really don't. Who do you, who do you have finishing up in this final four? Who do you have winning it all? I mean, from what I've seen so far, I'm, I'm going to go with Gonzaga unless, unless Houston or Oregon can, can. Not Oregon, can, not Oregon. Baylor, Baylor. Ba- I'm sorry, not Oregon, but Baylor. Unless uh, Houston or Baylor can pull off an upset, but I'm going to go with Gonzaga, and that's not really saying much. Okay. Jason, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ask you the same thing. What is your What is your mindset when it comes to this Final Four and not having – really they have a blue blood in there, which is UCLA, but not the conventional UCLA that we're used to seeing, the powerhouse – of the John Wooden days and Toby Bailey in the 90s. I remember Toby Bailey. <laughs> but who do you think? You remember Toby Bailey and the Ed, o, Ed O'Bannon brothers? Ed O'Bannon. I'm so mad at Ed O'Bannon. I, I, don't, don't speak that man's name. I'm so mad at that man. Hey, man, you know he did what he had I'm, to do. I, I, he did what he had to do, but he ruined, he ruined about the last eight years of my life. So Right, because, <laughs> because of him, we have not been able to play collegiate basketball or football on the PlayStation or Xbox, but that's, that's another <laughs> conversation. But, Jason, I want you to tell me uh, who you think is going to win it and who is a player that we may not know about that's going to shine in this Final Four weekend. Well, I mean, when you look at it, um, like you have Gonzaga coming in. They're a perennial favorite. Um, they, they're 30 and 0. Um, and Gonzaga, they basically they play, they, they, they play, they've already played beat Baylor this year. Um, so it's, um, it's really looking like it's Gonzaga's sort of tournament, to, I mean, tournament to lose. However, I, I, I feel like Baylor can give them a run for their money because I think Baylor has gotten stronger since they met up the first time. Uh, they have the three-guard offense that is hard to contain um, with, um, with Mitchell. And um, they, they have, they have um, other guards that come off the bench that can help um, they help kind of whittle the game down, kind of slow the game down and control the pace of the game. So I think Baylor, I think we're on a collision course with Baylor and Gonzaga to meet in the, in the, in the final game. I just think um, Gonzaga just has too much up front. Uh, they have a lot. They have a lot of. They're a, good, a perfect mix of a, vet, a lot of vets with a lot of like um, with a lot of, with, with true star power. And the guy that I think everybody I don't know if you've been paying attention, but the guy we're looking at in this tournament is um, Jalen Suggs, the freshman from uh, Gonzaga. Uh, Suggs, um, who turned down offers from Duke, uh, Kentucky, Ohio State, 
went to Gonzaga, um, was, a, was a high school quarterback, actually. He was offered on both, on both sports. But um, his future is on, on, on the court. And he's looking like he's probably a top five pick in the NBA draft. But I think Jalen Suggs, his name's going to become a household name after after this weekend. I, I feel like Gonzaga will be cutting down the nets on Monday night. And I, I'm going to agree. I, I, you know, I, I want I want to have some kind of kind of controversy there. I would, would want to see if UCLA can maybe potentially be an upset, but I just don't think UCLA has enough. It, they were 11 seed for a reason, and right. I think that I think Gonzaga, like you said, they're too deep. Suggs is going to be the guy, and what's the kid? Tim's. Tim's is going to be Timmy. You got Timmy, and then you got Timmy, Corey, Timmy. Corey hey, you got Andrew Nimhard off the bench, who's another guy who kind of takes the pace whenever they have to like move Jalen Suggs off the ball. So they have a lot of they have a lot of uh, firepower, and they they've been like beating team. They they usually are a high scoring team, so it's it's going to be hard to, for the um, for I would say even Baylor or Houston, who's a defensive team, maybe maybe give them a better matchup because of the defense that they play. But um, I think just Houston. I don't know if Houston has enough firepower in terms of scoring to actually maintain or hang with Gonzaga. Yeah, so I see. I see. Like you said, I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna agree with you. I see Gonzaga with a collision course with Baylor once again, and Gonzaga once again will cut down the nets. And to be honest with you, it won't even be close. So they won. I think what they say, 78 percent of their games by double figures. And I think right. it's not going to be any. It's not going to be any different against UCLA. And I hate to say it, it won't be any different against Baylor. But let's go ahead. I want to. I want to kind of touch on a reason why. I'm going back to you, Gerard, for a moment, if I may. Uh, you said that you really don't care. And the reason why you don't care is because of what? What is it? Is it not enough impact players? We don't really know anybody in this tournament. The potential number one pick is supposed to be Kay Cunningham out of Oklahoma State, who's already committed to the NBA draft. And in, in my opinion, in any other draft, Kay Cunningham would probably be a second round pick. Draw, jump in for a second and tell me what you think about the state of college basketball. What? what why is it so different? I think one of the reasons why it's so different is because, you know, we got the G, we got the G League. Um, kids are opting out of going to college and going to the G League because they can make money playing basketball in the G League. Um, they can make way more money than what they would have been able to make going to the D League. So since Gatorade bought out the D League and turned it into the G League, they, they added an extra incentive for talent to come to the G League instead of going to college or even going to the NBA draft early. You know, play, some players will go into the draft knowing that they're not going to be drafted high, but because of financial situations, they still go into the draft because they want a paycheck. They want to get paid to play. They, they want to get paid to play basketball. And me personally, I don't see anything wrong with that because if a person has an opportunity to go and be a professional in any field and get paid a, a, a nice amount of money to do it, why not Why not congratulate them or why not, you know, let that be what it is? Um, going to college is not really it, – it's, it's, I'm not going to say it's a guaranteed road to success, but if you can go and get money playing basketball right out of high school, why not? <clears throat> I'm going to go a little bit against the grain on this because when you go to college, you get a free education. It's a not free. Educa- You're not getting a free education. Why is, it, why is it not free education? If you go hmm. on a full-ride a full scholarship, how is it not, how, how's it not free? Please explain first it. Of all, first of all, it's not free because you have to work every day for that scholarship. You got to go to class. You have to be a okay. student athlete. Um, you, you, you have to hold yourself to a – to a higher standard than other students do because you are a student athlete. Not only that, most of the time when you go to a college and you are a, a quote unquote star athlete, those schools get TV deals off of who's playing for those colleges. Mm-hmm. So if let's just say Kay Cunningham doesn't go to Oklahoma State. Will we even have seen Oklahoma State on TV at any time this year? Probably Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Probably not. Oklahoma State is always on TV. What are you talking about? Not always. No, not, not always because Oklahoma State doesn't always have the best of talent. Oklahoma State has always had talent. Go back and check the resume on Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has always had potential NBA picks on their team. They have always been in the, in the, okay, in the so top that, of the that, So that better establishes my point. You know what I'm saying? If Oklahoma, like, like I said before, if Oklahoma State does not have these talents 
in their program, they're not on TV, plain and simple, which means that their program is not getting the money that it's supposed to get to even, you know, to even sustain it still. Right. To pay for his to pay for his education when everybody else has to pay for an education. It, life is work. Life is work. When you come into school and you're getting a free education, my thing is I'm not saying I'm not in favor. I mean, in this in favor of not paying it, the athletes. I think in certain aspects they should. But my thing is developing the, the, the G League and the D League. I think it's really – if they're going to let them go, let them go to the NBA. Like, regardless if they're going to be developed Only or so not. Only so many people can go to the NBA, though. But, they, but, but we had that discussion where first round – they can go – look at all them players from Kentucky that made it to the league and really didn't do anything. Let these guys go, and if they can't make it, they can't cut it. Then they can get dropped back down to the G League or the D League. But making an 18-year-old make a decision like that, of course he's going to choose to make money. Who's not going to choose to make $200,000 a year? But let me go to Jason real quick. Let me let, me let Jason bump in here real quick. And, Jason, talking about what, what right now, about college players going to the G League or high school players coming out and going to the G League, how do you feel about that? Or is it the G League or the D League, whatever it's called now, I just feel like, in my personal opinion, that those guys, if they have either you can go to the NBA or you go to college, I think you should not put a stop gap in between. Jason, how do you feel about that? I feel I I, I kind of like I'm gonna split the banana, I'm gonna split the split the baby here because I like I feel like I, I agree with some of the things Gerard said. Basically, like if you're like you're 18 years old, you should have the opportunity to go earn a living playing basketball. Um, if if the, if the opportunity presents itself, so if the G League is an opportunity that presents itself, you don't want to do school work, you don't want to be bothered with the classes then go ahead and let them go to the G League. Let them get a chance to develop themselves and grow into a pick. Now, also, I look at it from the standpoint of, like, going to college. If you do go to college, there's the big thing about going to college is you, you create an opportunity to brand yourself. Let's look, at, let's look at Zion Williamson. When Zion went to college, he went to Duke for that one year. Everybody knew who Zion was. He was an internet sensation. Everybody, like, they see, you see all his dunks. He's all on Instagram. He's on uh, Sports Center for Duncan. What Zion Williamson, what happened with Zion Williamson when he actually went to Duke, he actually had to, he got a chance to work with Coach K for one year and actually develop his skills at a level that I don't think he can de develop himself at it in, at the G League. He got the he got a chance to be got to kind of be a star, be the main man on a platform that was provided to him by uh, being on ESPN or, or being on a ABC uh, on the game of the week, where he can when he can walk into a situation he's not starstruck when he, he hits the NBA court. And he's not out there like this is the first time I've, I've actually been in a crowd this big or he's had that mantle already uh, as he's been trained for that one year at, at Duke. So I think what, from my standpoint, I, I, I agree with like if, you, if, you, if you're good enough to go to the G League, go ahead and let them go to the G League, let them develop. That's the choice they make. They want to take the money. That's that's fine. You just don't get the coaching and development that you will get saying going to a, to a Duke going to even a Kentucky or, or, or going to like any, 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 I would say power five basketball, uh, basketball school, they give you an opportunity. That gives you an opportunity to work with a coach who may be able to develop the skills better than a coach that, that's working in the G League. But not, Kentucky any, but not Kentucky anymore because they lost their uh, developmental staff to the New York Knicks. That's right. one of the reasons why Kentucky was so terrible this year. Right. Right. Because it ain't because they didn't have a talent. It's because they didn't have that developmental staff. Right. Let, and we let all know coach. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jason. Go ahead, Jason. I was gonna say we all, we all, we know Cal. We know well from my my standpoint. Coach Cal has never. He's always been a guy who gets you there, like gets you. He can recruit you there to wherever he's at, but he's not going to develop you. And we, we that's clearly evident, like wherever he's been. Like even some of the players from Kentucky, Memphis, even going back to UMass, when they got to the league, they they just had they didn't have the skills that was required of them to be a successful basketball player in the NBA. Right. Gerard, this is what I'm, I'm going to aim this towards you. You're saying, okay, these kids can go to the G League or the D League and make $200,000, but you want to mortgage your future for $200,000 when you could be making $200 million? Like, that's what that's what I look at it from. Because when you go to the G League, it's a what's the percentage of these guys getting out of the G League or the D League? What's, what's, what's the percentage well, of these of all, guys going? It's not like they can go and be a top draft pick. Now when they go through, go through that de developmental league, they get – they got to make it through summer league. They got to make it through. They got to really work their way up. Now, it's, unless it's, I don't know some, unless it's something that I don't know. Do it's they have like season? Huh? It's, it's different. So basically, there, there, there are like you got to look guys like Jalen Green. Jalen Green is probably the top player in, in, in uh, he was probably the top player coming out of high school last year. Helm and K cutting him right neck and neck. And, and Jalen Green chose instead of going to, I want to say he's going to Kentucky. Or um, I want to say he's going to Kentucky or I think Arizona State. He's choosing between those two schools. He chose to go to the G League. Jalen Green's still going to be a top top five pick in the NBA. 
he just they put them on a team. It's like basically there's a team in the G League. There's just strictly it's called G League. It's uh, G Ignite. I think that's the name of the team. So they've been on ESPN and everything playing against. They're playing against adult competition. They're playing against teams in the G League, and they're developing. But I just don't get that they don't get their their minutes are very, kind of rationed out where they're not really. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't say you're not getting the, set, the, the the same effect that you would as you go in the NBA. It's kind of like being like the players over in Europe when they play like they play. You see how they draft people on potential instead of drafting people on actually their actual production. So it's like, you know, you get a guy like Christoph Porzingis, for, for example. Christoph Porzingis was playing like, what, 12, 14 minutes a game before his, his club team over in Europe before he was drafted by the Knicks. He gets to the Knicks and, he, they, of course, they worked on his development, but he, get, he gets there. And he's developed enough where he can actually become a star in the, with the Knicks. So it all depends on the development that they're receiving now with the G League or whatever team they go to. But, Jason, you made a good point. And the point that I want to, want to talk about is they are able to build a brand. The guy, Green, that you're talking about, I know nothing about this kid. Right, you know, right. Some, people that's, some people that's heavy into basketball and recruiting on the, on, the, on the high school level will. But he didn't get an opportunity to come and build his brand. But guess what K. Cunningham did? He solidified his stuff as the number one pick. And he, and he in any other draft, this was five years ago, he would definitely, I ain't going to say it would be a second-round pick, but he, he wouldn't, he'll be like a, a mid, he wouldn't be a lottery pick, I don't think, according to what other talent was coming out. But once again, I feel like in this situation, and this is going back to Gerard, this is a situation where you, this is slavery and this is pimping. I look at this as, as, as NCAA and the NBA pimping these young kids because guess what, if they're not that good, you make two hundred thousand dollars. That's not enough to live on, Gerard. Two hundred thousand dollars. What if you only make twenty? Let's say you make it. Let's say you stay in the league three years and you make six hundred thousand dollars. Okay, you got to pay all these people. They don't. They don't have any financial management. Management, and then they got to go back. Now they want to go back to college that they have to pay for. So that's why. That's what my my dilemma is on this because six hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars, even if you make a million dollars, is really not enough to sustain over a course of a lifetime. We've seen so many people go broke. Now, mm -hmm. if you're 18 years old, of course you're going to go grab that because you, your mama's struggling, your daddy's struggling, and you may have a kid early. Yeah, you want to you wanna get that money. But when you have the talent, you got to bet on yourself. And then you got to go to school because you got to be able to think at some point in time. And if you have a free education, even if that don't work, you can always fall back on the education with it being free and you building a brand. And a lot of times when you go to these colleges, especially Ohio State, Alabama, Kentucky, UCLA, you become a fan favorite. And all those alumni, if you can't get a job, you can always go back to the university and they can help you out, which you can't do if you go to the G League and then you try to come back because you never have any affiliation with that college. <clears throat> well, first of all, most people are going to choose 200000 <laughs> over going to school, struggling to eat, struggling to do this, struggling to do that. So anybody's going to do that. But that's not to say that just because you're in the G League that you still can't learn on the side or learn about finances or even invest some of that money to do something with while you're in the G League. Uh, most, most guys, even if they don't get to the league, they're not going to make that much money in a year or even two years as far as $200,000, $400,000. So that type of money – is a game changer period i don't care who you are there's a lot that you can do with that money within that those within that time period that you win a g league and if you are successful in the g league you'll be drafted into the nba it's 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 almost kind of like college but without the schoolwork and you getting paid because everything is a farm system to the nba now they just adding a bigger paycheck to that farm system yeah, I understand about playing for college and getting an education and learning this and learning that, but let's 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 go back to reality, man. Everybody's not built for the classroom. Plain and simple. How many how many guys do have we grown up with or seen on TV that have all of the talent in the world in sports, but you get them in the classroom and they can't do nothing. But they that's the thing. Read, they can't read that Murray had a okay. well, uh, little Drama. You know what let I'm me, saying? Let, let me get in here for a second. Okay, you saying that they can't read. So, okay, just because you got 200,000. I'm not saying they can't read. Hold on, hold on. I'm not saying they can't read. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, but you, what I'm what I'm taking from this is, okay, you make $200,000. That's supposed to ail all your, your educational woes. At some point, you're going to have to be a thinker. So, my thing is, at least go to the colleges and let them put you in programs that can help you develop because it's free. How many times have we had people that go to college and they can't finish 
because they're under the under a hundred level developmental courses and they never get opportunity because they got to pay whole, that money. A whole That's bunch a, of you NBA can get, you can get the best went, tutors, but a whole what what NBA player that came out early didn't go back to school. Vince Carter did it. A bunch of guys did it. Vince Carter went and graduated, flew back and played in that next game. So how many people didn't know? How many people? How, we, didn't don't, know? we don't. We don't. We don't. How many know. people? They made a 30 for 30 broke series about people that did not do right with their money, man. And, and I, I, tell, life, I, I guarantee that's you. life period, though. It's a lot of people that don't do right by their money. Just because you go to college don't mean you're going to do right by your money. It's a better chance. No, it's not. Didn't Antoine, what, Antoine Walker went to college? He went to Kentucky. He still blew all his money. Because he had a gambling problem. He had an addiction. Well, that, that's what, it don't matter. It don't matter how you lose it. It's, it's the fact that you losing it. Period. You're but, trying to right. make. The, you're trying to make the argument that if you go to college, you're going to still be successful. And that's not that. That is not a. You guarantee. got a better. I'm. What I'm saying is no, you, you got a better, a better chance. chance. So you're no, telling you me don't. you no, you, you don't. can't say that you don't have a better chance after you. you don't, I'm a, I'm a, because you don't. I got a college education, and I wouldn't have a job I have now if I didn't go to college. Okay, but that, but that's you. There's other, there's up, uh, there's other people who've got who has college educations, and it's still not panning out for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. there is a lot of professional athletes who went to college, either left early or even graduated, and still don't have those opportunities, just for the simple fact that they went to college. That's just life. It's not going to work that way for everybody because if it did, it would be a cookie cutter system and everybody would be the same. Jason, go ahead. And this, we got to, we got to close out. Go ahead, Jason. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, I was just like, like I, I, like I said, I, I see both, I see both of you guys points on, on, the, on the situation. Like I said, I can, I can, I can, I can re relate to you as well, Jody, with the college education and actually having an opportunity, like the opportunity that you then wouldn't have without a college education. But I was going to look at what Gerard said. People, there were people like I struggled to get my opportunity. I finally broke through. After year, I mean, after a few years of having a college education, but um, it, it, it's, it's not like I said. The system's not. It's there's it's nothing perfect about the system. There's no no perfect like. There may be somebody who goes to the G League, they blow out their knee, and they, that's their opportunity is gone. They can't go back to college. Their eligibility is gone. But right. you also have the opportunity. You have the opportunity. You look at somebody who does go to the G League, and maybe they play. Maybe they're a fringe NBA player, and they play their way. They develop themselves up to an NBA draft pick, and they make a, they make more money off of that. So it's, it's it's all about the risk that you want to take. Which we it's have like, seen. Which we, we have seen. seen. We seen. It. I mean, you, even if you look at a guy like Jay Sean Tate, who went who went to Ohio State, graduated from Ohio State, went to uh, Australia. He went to Australia for one year to play. Now he's basically he's going to make all rookie team in the NBA because he 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 worked on developing himself, and then he has the opportunity now to get a bigger contract. But he took that risk. That's the same thing a kid at 18 years old is taking that risk by going to the G League, betting on themselves that they're going to actually develop into an NBA player and getting a bigger contract. So it's all a risk. It's all, Everything's a risk. Going to college is a risk because you can get hurt in college. And going going to the G League is a risk because you can get hurt in the G League. But it's a risk that you have to take on your – it's a risk you have to take. And basketball gives you the opportunity to do both. That's something that a lot of black kids don't have. I, I, I was like kids in general. They don't have the opportunity. That, that round ball gives them the opportunity to even go to the G League or even go to college. So that they can potentially go to some uh, book to something that could make them a millionaire. So, well, I'm in close in closing because we got to wrap this up. I'm gonna go. This is what I'm gonna say on this situation. My thing is, I'm not against players going to the NBA, but I am kind of opposed to players going to the G League and the D League because I feel like if you go to the NBA and you sign up, you at least sign because NBA contracts are guaranteed. I think they should allow them to go if they don't pan out. At least they got four years and they made twenty million dollars. Instead of you going to the G League and maybe make two hundred thousand, may not even come back the next year. That's my, that's risk. my argument. That was it's my just argument. The risk, man. That that's what I'm saying. But I'd rather take the risk. If you go into the NBA and you got twenty million, you can be you but can. You set your, you're not your guaranteed twenty million. The first draft just, pick is only guaranteed like ten million, so nobody's getting twenty million. They they, they are making more. They making more every year. But what I'm saying is, at least you got guaranteed money for at least four years, even if you get hurt or not. In the G League, there's no guarantee, and then they they see. And once again, it's it's the pimping, it's the slavery. Because now, guess what? Once you're done, we're gonna go on to the next one. But, but Jody, everybody, you know, anything you do, and if you're not a top, if you're not a top lottery pick, everybody else's contracts are gonna be in the in the in the low grade pay scales they're not getting millions of dollars in a second round they're they're not getting those big contracts but, they still, but they make they i bet the second round contract. players second round players are making more than the g league so hey this is it's the nba it's, it's, everybody it's, 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 everybody can't be drafted into the nba so for those guys who can't be there's the g league 
Right. Yeah. But I'm talking about guys that had opportunity to go to college. They don't even know how good they would be. They could have been a lottery pick, and now they got to fight the back end. But we, once again, this is an age old conversation. We'll 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 revisit this conversation. It's against the grain sports. Like and subscribe to the page. Hey, give us your comments. Let us know how you feel about this because evidently it's a very emotional topic. We'd love to hear what you got to say. And like I said, we still have opportunities for you. If you want to hit us up, and you can get on the show and you can speak and you can speak your own mind. So once again, it's your host Jody Coleman. We've got Gerard and Jason. Sports our way. All right, you had to cut it right there. <laughs> that, right. That's a that's a very emotional topic. I mean, it's a topic that we could be talking about for hours, man. But you know, yeah. I still feel the same. I feel. I mean, I feel what you're saying, Gerard. But I just, I got my son. He just got accepted at North Texas. So let's say he's going to play football, and let's say they had a developmental football league. I'm gonna tell him to go take the North Texas route because guess what? If he gets hurt at the very least, because you could take an insurance policy out when they go to college. A million, you can take a million dollar insurance policy out. It's a lot of kids that did that. Mm-hmm. But guess what? The, the difference of what I'm saying is when Tim Tebow, if Tim Tebow would have developmental football league, he would not have been, he, he's a he's a millionaire off of basically college. He didn't become a millionaire off the, off the NFL. He went to college and got that brand. It's different. Like the NFL is totally different than like uh the NBA. Cause I think like the NFL, you those play, they need those three years because most of them kids, you know, you big, but you get hit by you go say you go from like blocking you know a two hundred pound kid to blocking in Dominican Sue. You, this is just not gonna happen. Right. It's it's, it's not. It's, you can't do that. Um. There like there's rarely a, a player that went to college like went to the NCAA. I would say they could have went to the NFL. Only one I can really think of off the top of my head is Adrian Peterson. Maybe, maybe perhaps. But yeah. like I said, but going back going back to what Gerard was saying, I get what you're saying, bro. I mean, money is the is 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 the equalizer to everybody's life. Mm-hmm. But I just can't take a bet on it because now the kid, who's his name, Green? Yeah, Jalen Green, yeah. He's not even mentioned on none of the draft boards, man. He's not on yeah, – he, he's, he, he's, he, he's, he's top five. Like, he's, I, I mean, like, I, if, I haven't seen his name on there. If you uh, – because, like, I mean, I watched, I watched a couple of those G League Ignite games. He's a really good kid. Like, he's really explosive. But, like, again, development, like, the dude, he doesn't have a jumper. So, basically, it's like you're drafting him on the potential of what he can be. He could, he could be the next – um he could be the next Gerald Green, or he could be he could be just like a guy who can jump. That's that that's what's the risk you take with like he could be Harold Green. He could be Harold Green. I mean, it's it's all about but basically it boils down to this. It boils down to risk. Even like even it boils down to situation. It boils, situation. Down to, it boils down to your situation. It boils down to where you go and who's there. Just like just like anything else. A lot of these kids, if they don't go to the if 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 some of these kids don't go to the programs that they go to with the developmental staffs that they got, they still not getting drafted. They still right. not getting drafted. But, that high. but look at look at look at Kentucky, man. You go to Kentucky, you damn near gonna get drafted. I don't give a damn. You if you go to Kentucky and you start with for Kentucky, you're gonna get drafted. Look at they, Emmanuel quickly, your guy. Uh, what's the other kid they had that I didn't think was that good? Maxie. What's the what's the what's the kid little the kid little that went to North Carolina? He's playing for Portland. He wasn't oh, even starting for North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, look at I mean, look at Patrick Williams. He wasn't starting at Florida State. Patrick Williams was starting at Florida State. Now he's starting for the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's just like it's 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 again the branding, like the development. Like, if you go to Florida, Florida State's one of the schools that you can you go you go to go Robinson, Craig, I'm not Craig Robinson. I think that was his name. Leonard Robinson. You go to Leonard Robinson. He's going to develop you into a player. So that's why Florida State players they they they're known to be defenders, tough tough guys, tough defenders. But again, Patrick Williams wouldn't have been a guy who could have came straight from high school. And went to the NBA because he just he just wasn't built like that. Right, but he couldn't go to the G League. And if he would have went to the G League, he could have got. It's a lot of players, and this is what I'm saying to you, Dry. It's a lot of players gonna get lost in the sauce in the G League, man. Yeah, I it's, think it's, it's, it's a lot of players can get lost in the sauce anywhere. Period. But if, coaching, get, man. But, but if they get lost in the sauce in the NBA, at least they got a paycheck. And if they get lost in the sauce at college, at least they got a brand management. Because anybody who go to these major collegians like your Duke, your North Carolina, Kansas, if they ever want to come back and be a coach, look at Sean May. Sean May is on the on the coaching staff in North Carolina, and he's going to potentially be a head coach at some point because he couldn't cut it in the NBA. So guess what? He got he got a lot, and you meet a lot of people, man. It's a lot, that's all I'm saying is like you got to look at the network and ask. But you're not going to meet as many people as you're going to meet at Duke as you are in the G League, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and again, it's just a risk. Like you said, that 200 seems like with 200. 
two hundred. You break okay. Say you get paid two hundred thousand. You know how much of two hundred? How much of the two hundred thousand you think they actually gonna see? That's their base salary. Exactly. Because you, you gotta pay, pay taxes, agents, agents, pay agents taxes. taxes, shit. Then you got baby mamas and everybody. Evidently, if he going to college for his family, everybody in their family got their fucking hand out. Right. You see what I'm saying? Then he gonna want to buy a car. You bro- you broke again, bro. You ain't got no more money. You broke. You 18 so, years old, so, you broke, you gonna want to stunt. Nobody gonna get no money and not stunt. He gonna stunt a little bit. And now you got is 200 G's and you gotta take care of the whole hood. Come on, man. Come on, man. Let's 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 let's, let's stop acting like that's that's a lot of money, man. Them agents gonna rape them, man. It's not, them a, it's not a lot of money, but this, but I mean the other scenario is is you go to college, you don't make it to the NBA, and now you just you just looking for a fifty to a hundred thousand dollar a year job, you know what I'm saying? Right, Which right. you already had a two hundred thousand a year job that you for how long though, Kane? It's, how long? It's, 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 I don't. We don't know. We don't. The know. Ba- look, we 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 know the you, basketball. It's already, but it's like you already like counting them to fail because they went to the G League I, and took two hundred thousand over in college and potentially getting eighty thousand a year on a on a on a job from they from they degree. I'm not, but look at, look at, if you go, okay, would you rather, okay, let me, you, you rather go for 10 years making 200,000 or go 30 years and making 100,000? It just oh, man. depends, man. As, at just, some point, yeah. at some point, because, the basketball going to stop. But the thing about that. it is, is you, you, uh, you depleting these people's money before they even get it. You don't know what type of investments that they can use to, to increase their money. You don't, let's, you just don't know. Let's, let's be real, man. How many people have really made, very like we 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 it's not it's it's a small handful of people that actually did right and it ain't that they did wrong with their money it's so many vultures out here man they see this 18 year old coming man they gonna rape him financially bruh like he unless he got some very strong people in his corner if he don't man i don't give a fuck who you are man you gonna they gonna try to get their money they i can't even say it because these white motherfuckers don't care bro they they, they they not these we are nothing to them man we're a pawn on these courts, man. They want to see if they they because they can get some players that's very good in the G League. They can start promoting the G League like this is where you need to go, and you're gonna start getting more and more kids going, and they're gonna bypass college, and you can get more and more kids lost in the sauce. And at, like I said, at the very least, if you go to college, you can at least build build a brand. Tim Tebow played in the NFL three seasons, man, and he became a millionaire off of just his brand. And it wasn't from the NBA. It was I mean NFL. It was from college, bro. Because he got the he had the highest selling jersey in college football history. He didn't bro. get none of that. He didn't yes, get he, none but, of those. Yeah, but now he's a brand. He got jobs off of being a brand. He's a he brand. Played, he played baseball being a brand. <laughs> right. He got a baseball job. He he never played baseball since high school. Came. He became a brand, just like any other player. You and only why I'm gonna flip over is why Lamelo Ball is so successful because his daddy, his daddy was a genius. His daddy branded Melo. He didn't have to go to college because his daddy branded. But we didn't. If his daddy wasn't wasn't who he was, we got to start giving kudos to him. If his daddy wasn't who he was, we wouldn't know who the hell Lamelo Ball is. We know he can hoop, but we he wouldn't have came in the league with a hype. He would not right. have made it as the second pick in the draft. It wasn't for his daddy. 